I've been up here the past two days uh, saying this film is really obscure and it's not on DVD and it's not on Blu-ray. Well, guess what? I'm not going to say that tonight. <laughs> T tonight's film is a classic in every sense of the word. Uh, when you put together Agatha Christie, Billy Wilder, Tyrone Power, Marlena Dietrich, and Charles Lawton, there's not a whole lot I think I need to say about this film, <laughs> quite frankly. But we do have someone in the audience that has a lot to say about it because she was in the film. And it is a distinct privilege and an honor to have here tonight in the house a great actress on the stage, TV, TV, and a philanthropist, and a talker, Miss Ruta Lee. Thank you. Oh, I get my own mic. Thank you. Would you all kindly consider your darling asses kissed for being here? <laughs> so let's start with saying, how did you get the part in Witness for the Prosecution? That's okay. a starting point. That's a starting point. <laughs> this is a, a marvelous story. Uh, it's a long story, so we'll serve cocktails in the middle of all of it. The bar's open <laughs> after the movie, by the way. Uh, years ago, a very fine resident of Palm Springs and Los Angeles and Chicago um, was uh, kind of the man about town and he loved to have pretty girls sort of around and at his events and so on and so forth. People might remember him, Scotty Rubin, a wonderful attorney. Mm -hmm. And he invited me to the opening of Frank Sinatra at the Mocambo on the Strip in Hollywood. Well. Macambo, Ciro's, uh, Trocadero were all going through rough periods, Alan, because television had come in, uh, everybody was at home watching the little tube instead of uh, being in nightclubs. Right. They were suffering terribly. Uh, Mary Morrison, who owned it, uh, was suffering. And Frank said, okay, I'll come in and play a week. Then Victor Mon will come in and play a week. Dean Martin will play a week. Mm -hmm. Sammy Davis will play a week. So anyway, I'm invited to the opening. And we were seated at a table, maybe about uh, 15 people, mm -hmm. right in the front row. Now, remember, the Macambo had a small stage. Frank's orchestra filled the entire stage. And Frank was working on a tiny little dais in front of the bandstand, which meant that there were people now that were seated behind him, basically, that were watching the show. And I had never seen Frank Sinatra I was too young to see him, you know, in New York when sure. he was a big rave, but he had done all the beautiful unrequited love albums. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, folks, I think you'll agree with me, there has never been, nor will there ever be, as mesmerizing a performer as Frank Sinatra here, on here. The stage. Here, here. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I sat there with my mouth hanging wide open, I think, staring at Frank Sinatra being touched by what he was saying and doing. After his performance, a note was delivered to our host, Scotty Rubin, who said, would you please bring Miss Lee to my table? I would like to meet with her. So Scotty escorted me to a table that was around behind Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, hello, Miss Lee. My name is Arthur Hornblow, Jr. Oh, yes. And I am producing a film called Witness for the Prosecution. And I have just given you a unique screen test. I watched you watch Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and I think that you would be a very good love interest for Tyrone Power <laughs> and witness for the prosecution. Would you come in and meet with Billy Wilder? And I said, it's tomorrow too soon. <laughs> I, I mean, I was awestruck. And so I went in, uh, they put me on film, Marlena Dietrich took one look at my blonde hair in the rushes and said, Nick, nine, forget it. <laughs> I became a brunette overnight. <laughs> Obviously, I got the job. Now, fade out, fade in. About two years later, we all know that Frank Sinatra, because he was a resident here, loved nothing more than a big Italian dinner at the house and running a new movie. 
They're running a new movie that night, and the new movie is Witness for the Prosecution. And Frank Sinatra says to Howard Koch, whom I'd worked for many times on Westerns, I've been watching this little Rudal Lee chick. Why don't we put her in one of our upcoming films? What do you think? And he said, well, you happen to pick one of my favorites, Frank. Frank Sinatra never knew that the reason I got to be the leading lady in Sergeant 3 is because he got me the job on Witness for the Prosecution. All right. Now, is that a story or what? Now, did you ever tell him that? Oh, of course I did. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. you sure know. He liked that. But he was dazzled, of course, right. by that. But Frank was a, a brilliant mm -hmm. guy. But when you talk about brilliant guys, Billy Wilder. Yes. Whoa. Oh, wow. I mean, he should have been a stand up comic. That's how funny he was. He had mm -hmm. this innate, wild sense of humor that was mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful. Of course, I was just a little twit, you know. Mm -hmm. there, there I was. This was just the second or third, maybe the third movie that I did. So I have a very small role. But nevertheless, I'm here because I'm the only one left alive in the movie. <laughs> but you also had a very important role. Well, I, I did. I yes. did. And, and we all had to sign something when we were making the film saying we will not discuss the ending, the ending of the film because mm -hmm. you don't want to blow it, you know. Exactly. And, and it had been a, a very successful play on Broadway. Mm -hmm. In fact, a very good actress that you probably all know, Marion Seldes, mm -hmm. was, did the, the Marlena Dietrich role on right. stage. Right, great stage actress. Yeah, but I, I have to tell you that when I first came into the picture, it was about mm, maybe five or six weeks after they had already started. started. Mm -hmm. And my dear friends, here's the thing you have to make note of when you see the film. The set designer rebuilt Old Bailey mm -hmm. to three-quarter scale. They took two sound stages, put them together, mm -hmm. and made a, a copy of Old Bailey, which right. was really quite amazing. And <clears throat> when I came in to do the show, uh, I, nobody, uh, well, the makeup department guys knew me because I had been doing television and whatnot, and they all knew me and were kind of taking care of me. And the makeup department guys all said, listen, Roots, uh, Roots. you gotta, you got to be careful with uh, Charles Lawton. You know, he's, he, uh, he, he's tough. He's a nasty old fag. He doesn't like young girls. You just, you just do your work. Go in, do your work, and everything will be fine. <laughs> so I came traipsing into the set after that warning, and I'm standing on the set, and they're all sitting about in a little British tea circle. Marlena and Charles and all the rest, and they're sipping their tea and they're having their little sandwiches, and nobody comes over to me and says, hello, hey, sit yeah. down, here you are, here I am, blah, 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 mm -hmm. and I'm in my slinky little tight dress and the little perky hat, and I'm standing there wishing for the first time in my life that the floor would open up and swallow me. Like the first because day of I'm, school I'm, or Exactly, yeah. I'm scared and I don't <laughs> quite know what to do, and someone comes up behind me and smacks me on the rear end. I go flying across the stage, and I turn around, and it's Charles Lawton. <laughs> and he says, that's the best damned ass I've seen in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and I became his little baby doll. He would pout if I didn't come in and say good morning to him in his dressing room first. Mm -hmm. And Elsa was divine. They both helped me with the Middle English accent. Mm -hmm. You know, you can all do limey, right. and you can do very proper British, mm -hmm. but that middle kind of British is In a little between. tougher, and, and they, they helped me with it a little bit, which was really kind of wonderful. But I have nothing but the greatest love, admiration for that big teddy bear, Charles Lawton. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. What a great story. I especially love that he loved my ass. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs>